Hi. Hi, it's Karen Berniston. Um, this is my first live. I hope everyone can hear me and everything is okay. I'm just going to check the chat real quick. Can everyone hear me? All right. Oh, I forget there's a delay. So, yes. Okay, cool. Well, we have 20 minutes to, um, <laughs> I know somebody said Nancy's was really fast. Thank you for everyone that came over from Nancy. There were some technical difficulties on her stream this morning. So, um, you know, but 20 minutes is fast to do a demo. So I'm actually not going to spend a lot of time talking. I'm going to get right to um, our demo. So I'm Karen Berniston. I am half of the uh, KB Riley team. My business partner, Tanya Kostinick, who owns Riley and Company, is, I think, in the chat. Um, and then I have my daughter, Ash, in the room, and she will call out any questions as we go. So ask questions. I can't follow the chat, you know, too much, but I can definitely do uh, questions. So um, we make dyes. We are a dye company. So um, and my specialty is pop up dyes. So I just thought with it being October today that we would do a fun little pop up tiny house that's decorated as a haunted house. So let me tell you first before we jump right into this, what dyes we're using. And our website is KarenBerniston.com. I think Tanya will pop that in the, the chat or it'll be in the description box below. In fact, all of the supplies that I use today are in the description box below already for you. Um, we do have a special this week for the whole week. You get, can get free shipping on our website for any order over $25 if you're in the USA. It's only domestic orders. So I'm sorry for my overseas people. Um, but okay, so we have a die that's called our tiny house pop-up. And uh, this has been a very popular dye. It really is sort of a foundation dye. With the dye alone, you can make a really cool pop-up tiny house. And it comes with all of the stuff you need to decorate it for that kind of year-round design. You know, the little flower boxes and the hearts and the this and the, you know, doors and everything. Then we have add-ons. And one of the add-ons, I'll show you the other add-ons after, but one of the add-ons we have is our haunted tiny house add-ons. So what these do is add just the pieces that you need to decorate your foundation die, which is your tiny house, as a haunted house. Okay, so I'm basically using three pieces out of my foundation die, which is my house itself, which also cuts the roof support. So I ran these through ahead of time. Okay, so just any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die works just fine. Okay, so it cuts and it scores and there are two pieces that come out of that one so don't lose your roof support when you do that let me move this stuff here okay so you're going to work the fold lines in the house so we've got you know this is going to be pretty intuitive because you're making a little house so it kind of makes sense that you're going to do those four mountain folds and then create that house shape and then at the base you'll see there's two tabs that fold under the house and that's what connects it to the card okay but it's easier to decorate this when it's flat. So what I like to do is just work the folds, especially for a haunted house, because that gives me the ability to hit the edges with ink. You know, if I folded it first, I can, you know, throw a little ink on that, okay? Which I'm like, not like, like nervous about 20 minutes. So I'm like, oh, maybe I just won't do much inking. Um, okay, so imagine I inked that a little bit nicer than that. All right, then if you want your tiny house to collapse to the back, okay? So what do I mean by that? When the card closes, the house lifts up and collapses to the back. That That is actually the one that people mostly use, but there may be times, for some reason, maybe the way you're decorating it, that you would prefer your tiny house to collapse to the front. Does that make sense? So let's imagine this is where the door is. It works either way, but if you're gonna put things like paving stones or anything in front of your house, in front of the door, then it's gonna operate better if you just always plan to have it collapse to the back, okay? So we're gonna have it collapse to the back. So what that means is that the front of my house is right over here on the left. So I'm going to use the pieces that come in, the haunted house add-ons. Oh, is there any questions? I'm just like blazing. I probably should slow down. Um, I'm good? Okay, I says we're good. Uh, all right, so there is a die in the tiny house add-ons that will cut a door and a door frame at one time. And I, uh, I wanted to show that it also has a stencil feature. So you can go in with a pen. We use stencil features a lot on our dies because it makes it um, easy to get little details without having to glue tiny pieces on. So that's always optional. You can also sponge through the die, um, but it's just a, you know, 
a cool feature that a lot of our dies have. Okay, so we're gonna take that door, we're gonna line it up right with the bottom edge. What I did to make these stickers in the interest of time is I just coated the back of my cardstock with a score tape before die cutting. And then now those pieces are stickers so I can just pick them up and put them on. So I like to cut the door frame out of two colors. So um, yes, Ash, there's a question. Uh, uh, Micah asks if that house always needs to be diagonal to the card. Yes, it will. That's a good question, Micah. It will have to be diagonal to the card um, just because of the way it operates. You know, um, it's, it's going to be in that position in the card. Now, you, can you do a top fold card? Sure, but it's still going to be diagonal. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's, that's the orientation of it for it to collapse in the card. Okay, then the other thing that the tiny house add-ons adds is these window backers, and they are basically kind of very small trapezoids. They're a little bit wider on the top, and that's just for a more ominous look. So in your tiny house base die, there are, um, there are straight ones. So you could always go back to the tiny house, you know, windows and doors too, but the ones for the haunted house, you know, they're supposed to look more foreboding so they're a little bit wider on top. And then it also comes with a die in the set that will cut you four window frames to fit those. Okay. So here we go. All right, and then you have little cuties in the set. So here's a little ghost that comes in that set. That also has a stencil feature. So before you would take your paper out of the die, you can use a pen and fill in the eyes and the little mouth. Oops, so here's our little ghosty, okay? So one thing I like to do with ghosty sometimes is, oh, I forgot my shutters. Hang on a second, y'all, I gotta put my shutters on. Hang out for a second, ghosty. There's a set of shutters and it's gonna cut all of them. So um, in other words, that die is going to cut all eight of those shutters at one time. So you don't have to run back through to get them. I think they look the best on a haunted house if they're crooked, so we're gonna make them Crooked. They could be hanging off, you know, they can be partially over the window, you know, whatever you want to do. I like that, um, you yeah, know, you're always in control. Okay, then let's put little Ghosty on. Ghosty's going to fly out from behind the boarded up um, door. So there's also a couple boards in the set, so you can board up your door for this haunted house. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Do your decorating. Well, it's flat, it's gonna be easier. Now we're going to go ahead and connect it. So you've got a tapered tab on this side that's gonna go around and connect to the other side. Now, lots of really good, you can tell, you can tell how nervous I am, y'all, I'm shaking trying to put my glue on. Um, lots of glues out there. We sell Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive, and then our favorite are these fine tip bottles, which we also sell on our website, and you just get a really nice small bit of glue. Um, and then what I like to do is I've got this fancy jar, but you can also use just like a wee yogurt jar. Put a damp paper towel in the bottom of it and that'll keep your glue flowing. Okay, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing okay, we're doing okay. All right, so I've connected the other side of my tiny house and now I need to get the roof support in. Okay, so that was the other piece that I said don't lose and then promptly lost. Uh, it has four score lines in it. So for the two ends, and then for the roof support itself, okay? So you can work all those folds, you know, until they're going. All right, now we're gonna put this in between the roof peaks. So this point right there is going to line up with the point of the house, see? And then this tab will go over here to this point and it'll just span the roof just like that. And you can put that in there first to kind of judge, well, where do I need to put the glue, all right? So on this one, obviously the glue needs to go behind the tab, but on this one, the glue needs to go in front of the tab. Is there another question, Ash? Um, so the person who's on your property, can answer Oh, okay, Tanya's here. Tanya's in the chat, cool, awesome. Hi, Tanya. Tanya gave me a pep talk this morning in the chat, or in a, by text and said, I know you're nervous, but you'll do okay. Uh, and thank you so much to Amanda with Pair Blossom Press. She's your next stop on the hop. And she has um, been amazing with me, especially with the tech calls and stuff, because I haven't done a YouTube live before. So she really did get me set up um, really nicely. And, and that was that was cool. Like I, I learned a lot of stuff this week getting ready for this hop. 
um, that I will carry forward. Maybe I'll do more YouTube lives if, you know. Uh, okay, so there's my roof support. And so I, it doesn't really matter, just one needs to fold one way and one needs to fold the other to hold the roof on. I like to do the one in front towards the, the right because it gives it a little bit more support in the direction that it twists, right? Because it's twisting this way. Um, okay, 10.30, I have 10 minutes. All right, I wanted to show you a cool feature of the roof die in the tiny house. Some of you may have this die already because like I said, it's been out for a while. Where's my die? Some of our dies are a die and a stamp all in one. In other words, they have a stamp feature in them and the tiny house is one of them. So the roof die can be cut with no ink and it'll just press in the shingle pattern into your paper and that looks lovely as well. But if you ink it, then when you run it through, it's going to die cut, score and ink the shingle pattern all at the same time. Okay, so I did that ahead of time in case I was short on time, but I think I can show you real quick how that works. And uh, like I say, any die cutting machine, this just happens to be a small die, so I can use a small machine that fits on the screen a little nicer. So what do you use for inking? It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, whatever you think you can keep your fingers from getting too inky doing. So I'm using just a little distress ink cube in black and I've already inked my fingers. Um, but you can use a bigger ink pad if you want to, or you can even use like a brush marker. So that die is a little different than regular dies because it has an extra layer that has the stamp um, pattern in it, and then it has a coating on it. You'll feel the difference in this die than the other dies in the set because it does have that coating. Okay, so you lay it down. And for this die, it's pretty easy to use your fingers. It's a larger die. But if you ever have one of our stamping dies that's really small, that little Spellbinders um, magnetic pickup tool is awesome for getting it off of your ink pad and over to your cardstock and kind of saving your fingers. And we do sell those on our website as well. Okay, let me roll that through. So I can just show you how it's going to, oh, I didn't ink all the way to the corners, but see, isn't that cool? It's just a good thing that I did one ahead of time. Um, oh, clean up on that, just water. So I have a spray bottle of water in my office because I squirt my paper towel every morning, you know, to make sure my glue stays flowing. So I just take a rag, squirt it, wipe it off, it's good, okay? You don't need any chemicals or anything like that. Okay, so let's get this roof on and get this thing put in a card. Okay, like I said, it did score it, so there's a score line up the middle, okay? And then all you're going to do is put adhesive on your two roof tabs and then just center it onto the top of the house. Let's see. Me and my, me and my nerves, <laughs> y'all. Okay, all right. Okay, I think it's easier to do that in the flat position. So I'm gonna flatten that down, fold that gluey tab to the back, open up my roof and just get right in there on the fold and, and I'm pressing down that one that's behind there and then see this one's gluey right here so I can get that over here and it's just basically centered you know this way all right so then there's yes Someone's asking what your glue of choice is. Oh, line, my glue of choice is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive. It's just a Dries Clear uh, PVA glue. Um, we do sell a four ounce bottle on our website. Um, our fine tip bottles come empty, so you can put whatever glue in them, but some glues flow better through bottles like this than others. Um, the Lineco works perfectly in it. That's all I use. It dries clear. I love it. Okay, we are ready to put this in a card. So here's the open position. Here's the collapse position. Now, how do you know you have it in the correct collapse position? Because both of your tabs line up over the top of each other. All right, now, if you collapse your house down and your tabs are next to each other, well, that's incorrect. You need to you know, shift it the other way so that they're right over the top of each other. And then this edge right here is going to go against the fold of the card. All right, another nice thing about our dies is for the most part, you choose your card size. You just have to choose a card that's big enough to hide the pop-up in the closed position. And with the tiny house, it is small. So depending on what you're gonna put on it, whether you're putting you know, big things, I did one that was an up house one time for an event, and so we had tons of balloons coming off the top of the house. Well, then you might need a bigger card or you might need to position it lower so that you have room for your embellishments. But on this one, 
I wanted to use one of our new slim pattern plates on the front. So this is a brand new die we have that's spiders. And that is a three and a half by six inch mini slim line pattern plate. You can always cut it and extend it, cut it down, you know, cut more. They'll, they'll line right up with each other. But I thought it would be cool to use that on the front of the card. And so then what I did is I just went a little bit wider. So I went four by six and a half on this one. And then my mailing would be a slim line, like a, you know, I would treat that like a slim line card for mailing it. I have one of those number 10 envelopes out. So that, that, a four incher will fit in that. So see, that's how I would mail it. Okay, so, and I've already put my paper on the inside. So do whatever decorating you wanna do on the inside. And then to attach this inside the card, you are just going to add adhesive to your uh, base panels, okay? And you want it all to glue down, so don't, you know, don't spare your adhesive, get it pretty well shellacked. And then I'm gonna take that edge right there and I'm gonna butt it right up to the fold. Now where along the fold, wherever you want the house to go, as long as it's hidden in the closed position. I see there's a question. Um, somebody uh, asked if you have a Christmas uh, version of the title. I do, I do. So what, we're, we only have four minutes. Okay, let me get this house in here and then uh, I'll show you the other tiny house add-ons that we have. Uh, sorry, oh my goodness. Okay, so we're gonna put the adhesive on this tab now. All right, and then we're gonna keep it nice and flat, close the card against the exposed adhesive. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, 20 minutes is fast. <laughs> it's because I was talking to Carol last night and she was like, you know, you gotta plan for 20 minutes. It's not very long. It's like it really isn't. Um, okay, one little thing I like to do is every once in a while when you, you know, you first make a card, when the roof comes down, it's not exactly sure what it wants to do. You know, is it gonna fly up like, you know, like it has bird wings or is it gonna collapse? One way that you can help it know what to do is you can take something like a bone folder and on this upper right corner, you can give it a little downward curl and on this lower or back left corner, you can give it a little downward curl. And then when it hits the, uh, the card it automatically knows to collapse inward and it won't try and fly outward on you because it's kind of already started if that makes sense in that position okay so there's our tiny house now i'm not going to do all the decorating because we only have a little few minutes left and um so uh i'm just going to show you that it does come with a spooky fence you can put a little adhesive on the spooky fence and just glue it to the back of the house okay and then it will pop out with the thing and then like I like I added a tree to mine from one of our other sets um, you know you've got a spider web spider a little jack-o-lantern those all come with the set you can use the boards you know maybe as a little walkway okay all right so three minutes you wanted to see the other tiny house add-ons let me show you those real quick um, and we do have some other new Halloween dies too so our skeleton and bat is new we didn't use that today but super cute we have another slim pattern plate that's bats that one's new as well um, this one's just cool to use with another Halloween. Note. Okay, here's our other two tiny house add-ons that we have right now. And um, I'm not saying anything, but maybe there's some more coming, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, mushroom tiny house, like if you want to do your little gnome cards and fairies in the forest and things like that, this adds a new kind of curved roof. And then there's the gingerbread tiny house add-ons. So actually, I have a couple cards with those. Let's see. All right, so here's your gingerbread tiny house add-ons and then I added the street lantern so that's a different die for the street lantern but all of those little you know candies and gum drops and things like that come with it okay so that's that one this these are all pretty similar um, but you know you can just do fun things with those here's another gingerbread house so yeah by getting your tiny house you know you're uh, you're set up for all of the add-ons you know that we have now and the ones that are coming in the future um, okay so I did pretty good, but it is uh, 1039, so, or for me, I'm in central time. Uh, I do YouTube videos. We, in fact, we have a designer challenge this week, so there'll be a new YouTube. We have a Facebook group. It's called um, Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps on Facebook. It's a really fun group, international. Um, we'd love to see you over there. And our website is karenberniston.com. I am teaching today right after this, but I am gonna try to hit the Zoom at the end today as well. So I will see you there, and thanks everyone. Oh, I guess I still have a minute. No, it goes. No, I don't. I was like, damn it. Okay. I'm going to send you over to Amanda. So you should redirect automatically. Um, but if you don't, I hope, well, you know what? In the, in, the, in the description box below this is a link to Amanda's live stream. So you can go right over there and join her. Um, and I sure appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.